Arayot comes from Arye, lion. Immorality is acting like animals. Now we still have to ask ourselves, why is it that we have to read the issues of incest every single year, multiple times in the Torah? Because when I was a little boy, the subject of homosexuality was not a common one. Although it existed, people that were homosexual, generally speaking, kept it in the closet. And when they finally came out, it was a big thing. Oh, he came out of the closet. Should have died in the closet, but okay, he came out of the closet. It was better off to die in the closet. Why? Because at least they'll have a chance of going to heaven. Once he came out of the closet, Shemish Mo, he's going to regret. He's going to want to burn that closet. But in those days, it was not so common, even though it existed since the beginning of time. It wasn't acceptable by society. It was still taboo. Fast forward 40 years. Look at what's happened. Most of you are young, so to you, you have grew up in such a society where homosexuality not only has become standard, but in fact, if you don't teach your kids that they should be homosexual, you're crazy. Why? That's what Disney is doing. That's what the lefty liberals are doing. They're telling you that you calling your son, your son is against, is against the normal uh, behavior that you should have as a parent. It's not loving your son. How can you decide that your son is your son? How can you decide that your daughter wants to be a daughter? Who made you God and made you decide that he is a boy? Well, God decided that he's a boy because he has the male member. No, that's not a decision. What's a woman? We don't know. We don't know. People in Congress, people that are executives of corporate America were asked, what is a woman? They don't have an answer. They don't have an answer. They don't know what a woman is. Why? Because if I define woman like the woman has been defined since the beginning of time, I'm no longer normal. I'm no longer accepting of other people's lusts and desires that are out of control. I'm no longer standardizing what used to be taboo just a few decades ago. So you see, Rabotai, we didn't talk about it so much when we were kids. And quietly the Satan made what was once taboo, the standard. The Holy Torah is not telling us that incest is relevant to some people in society. The Holy Torah is telling us that incest is relevant to us in our society. Because the Or Chaim HaKadosh says, in Egypt, we got to such a level of impurity, we were at the 49th level of impurity. One more sin, we would have never left Egypt. Hence the reason why HaKadosh Baruch had to get us out of there at once. Hence the reason why the last couple of uh, years were the worst of the worst, because the decree originally was for 400 years. But at 210 years, we got to such a level of impurity that Hashem says that if one of them commits adultery, if one of them commits homosexuality, if one of them commits any bestiality, which is standard among the Egyptians, if one of them does it, that's the 50th level, they will not have a right to exist, they can never leave Egypt. The only thing that kept us out of the 50th level is that we were still moral. We didn't commit adultery. We didn't commit homosexuality like the Egyptians. There were no lesbian Jews. No such thing. Yet we still got to the 49th level. What saved us was the morality we still had. Had one Jew committed homosexual act, one adulteress, one cheating, one, we would have never left as a nation. The Ora Chaim HaKadosh says, before Mashiach comes, we will be at the 50th level. 
And the only reason we can survive the 50th level is because now we have the Torah. That 50th level, Rabbutai, is something we're fast approaching every year. 40 years ago, having a conversation like this would have never happened. Why? Homosexuality was still taboo. When I asked my Rav, Rav Ephraim, can I do research like I do on everything else on incest in the world today? Because when it came to morality, when it came to promiscuity, when it came to uh, uh, tikkun ablit, all that stuff, it's not just the, uh, the biblical research we did and the learning of the Torah and so on. We also did scientific research that we looked into and reviewed and we brought in the movie and so on. So I asked, can I add this topic to the realm of things like we study everything else, like the Holocaust, like, like idolatry and so on? No. I had a lust over the last few days to what? To do research. Not to go look at improper things, to do research. But I was forbidden from doing research. Why? He says, that's mamash going to the war with the Satan. Even to do research on such a topic. There's enough in the Torah to provide a shield for people. You don't need details and numbers. Why? It's already enough to present it in such a fashion to make you all realize 40 years ago, Homosexuality was taboo. Ora Chaim HaKadosh says, the time before Mashiach, we're going to be in the 50th level. In Parashat Achre Mot, it says that homosexuality is an abomination. So why did you mention a whole list of other things? Because it seems like in this generation, the most disgusting things that are not so much against nature the most taboo things that are not necessarily so far-fetched may very well and hopefully I'm wrong become the standard if 40 years ago it was scary for a person to admit what he did in his bedroom and today they're forcing us to feed children that they cannot decide what gender they are and no one can decide it for them and you, they should the boy should be a girl because he likes barbies and the girl should be a boy because she likes pliers and you should ask your children for permission before you change their diapers because that's their privacy and all types of other lefty nonsense that type of conversation would have never taken place 40 years ago needless to say the topic of incest is very much a reality in the world today. I don't know the exact numbers of how many people are committing this, but I could assure you, whatever the numbers were 40 years ago, multiply them by a factor of a thousand or more. Why? Because look at the conversations people have among themselves and their children. Look at how fathers allow their daughters to walk around. Look at how parents are talking to their children about their boyfriend and their girlfriend. You think that the father that sees his daughter with no arms and no legs, he doesn't think of that? Because she's his daughter, he's so holy. This tameh that allows his daughter to walk around with no pants and no arms and no nothing. She looks like one of the girls that he saw in one of the clubs. She looks like one of his fantasies. You think he's so holy he doesn't think of his daughter that way? You think the mom that's not exactly so happy with the father, but her son that's 18, 20 years old, built like a rock, walking around just with his underwear, doesn't give her some ideas? Disgust you? That's the future for the people that won't be holy. That's the future for the people that won't be holy. Why? That's 50th level. Everything else we've done. Now, if you think this is all new, even that's not new. Incest existed in the Torah since the beginning of time. The son of Esav committed incest with his mother. Menashe, 
had incest. Uh, all type, there was, I'm known, one of the sons of David the Melech committed all types of garbage has existed throughout history. Just like homosexuality has always existed throughout history. Nothing new under the sun. What's the new thing? What's, why is it 50th level? Because although all of it has always existed, it became intolerable when it became the standard. When society turned the taboo into acceptable behavior. Homosexuality was taboo just when I was a kid. I'm not a thousand years old, I promise. I feel like it, but I'm not. Just a few decades ago, it was taboo. Today, it's beyond standard. It's beyond standard. Not just standard, it's beyond standard. Meaning, if you're straight, there's something wrong with you according to society today. How far are we from a generation where a father and a daughter telling the world that they want to get married is no longer a big deal? It's been in articles on the internet, you can see it's happened many times. Father wants to marry his daughter, mother wants to marry her son, brother and sister. It's, it's, it's all over society throughout its history, recent history. That's not new. The new filth will be when it's no longer a big deal. Just like somebody saying they're homosexual is no longer a big deal. In fact, if he's not homosexual, it's a big deal because he looks like a girl. He spends five hours in front of the mirror just to do his hair to make sure it's straight up. He wears tights and it simply looks like a second pair of skin. He grooms himself more than his wife. You're surprised that he's married to a woman. But here, Rabotai, that's standard. The standard of the future for the people that do not choose to become holy will be this. Why? What's to stop them? Why stop? If it's all about you and enjoying you and doing you, you've done everything. You ate everything, you went everywhere, you did everything, you're still unhappy. What's to stop a mom from satisfying her son? Why not? Why not? Give me one logical reason not to. Now you're going to say it's disgusting. To you it's disgusting. You have a little bit of Torah in you. That's why it's disgusting to you. But what if I don't have the Torah in me? What's to stop a person from making the taboo simply preference? Why not? Why not commit murder? Oh, it's illegal. What if it's not illegal anymore? How many people will start killing their neighbors? How many people will kill their spouses? How many people will kill their own children? If, if, if murder became legal for a day, how many murders do you think would be there? Lots. If you are allowed to rob people for one day, how many robberies do you think would take place? A whole lot. The second homosexuality became no longer taboo, look how it grew. Once incest is no longer a taboo, Rabotai, because people will come to the realization that a world absent of holiness has no reason not to commit the most heinous crimes known to man. Why? Because it's not even unnatural. Because even the Torah, even a Kadosh Baruch Hu says it's not unnatural. Homosexuality is unnatural, bestiality is unnatural, yet there are millions of people. One percent of the U.S. population admits to committing bestiality on a regular basis. One percent, you're talking about four million people in America, admit to committing bestiality. If I've disgusted you enough, that's good, that means you're still normal. If you're not disgusted, there's something wrong with you. Four 
one million people just in this country are perfectly happy committing it. They think that Bertha the cow is their girlfriend. Josh the bear is their boyfriend. What's the problem? There's really a bear named Josh down the street. He's in a zoo. His name is Josh, what can I tell you? We met him last week. If Josh had a girlfriend, some people would think it's weird, but not those four million people. The second holiness is no longer an admirable thing. The second holiness becomes something that society frowns upon. We turn this world into Sodom and Gomorrah to the tenth power. And that's the 50th level, Rabotai. So you see, it's no longer a easy choice whether to aspire to be holy or not. Perhaps we had that choice when we were kids to aspire to be holy, to not to aspire to be holy, to be standard, to do your best. It seems like the only thing that would save us would be to aspire to be holy. Why? Just to maintain our own sanity. And to remind ourselves that Josh the Bear can no longer, cannot, can never be a husband. Just to remind ourselves that the sister and the brother and the mother are, are not potential shiduch. Even if you see an entire neighborhood of people telling you it is. You have an entire society telling you that the abomination is the ideal. Meaning that we are only a rock throw away from them telling you that what's not an abomination is the ideal also. To serve Hashem is no longer something we need to do because we aspire to go to heaven. To serve Hashem has become something we need to do in order to survive as normal people. A society that we have been building is a society of filth that is worse than what you see in a jungle, in a safari. Because even there, they don't commit the heinous crimes that have become standard. Morality has never been so important as it is now. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said in the Zohar Kadosh that the generation before Mashiach, their tikkun for the men is going to be learning Torah and tikkun abrit. For women, it's going to be modesty. That's the big deal. Modesty. And sending their husbands, obviously, and their kids to learn Torah. How could this be? Everybody was modest in his day. Everyone was modest during the time of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. You didn't see anybody walking around with mini skirts. You didn't see walking around, anyone walking around with tight jeans. You didn't see any of that stuff. So why could you say the Mashiach will come when everybody's modest? You didn't have uh, the apps that has all the filth and pornography in it uh, in those days. How can you say that when everybody's not wasting seed, that's when the Mashiach is going to come? Simple. The Torah told us, we're going to get to the 50th level of Tumah. That means that all of the things that are obvious, clear to every normal human being in society will no longer be normal. That means that we will live in a society that all of the abominations will become normal. All of the heinous will become normal. All of the disgusting will become normal. And all of the good will be frowned upon. Being mothers today is no longer just to protect you from sins for yourself. It's no longer just to help your friend not get a divorce because our husband is looking at you. 
It's now also to remind yourself that you have a God, that you're a human being, that you're not a beast in the jungle trying to feed whatever instinct is pushing. Being modest is no longer something that's, oh, maybe learning Torah is no longer something, ah, when I get time. How are you going to know the difference between an animal and you without learning the Torah? How are you going to know the difference between the goyim that are committing all the heinous crimes that Hashem is saying is standard to them and you, if you're acting the same way? The only thing that will remind us that there's God above us that there's a future beyond us that we are a unique people is our holy Torah but not just because it's stuck in some closet rather because it's stuck in our heart and we're practicing it and we're doing it and we're proud of it especially when it distinguishes us from everybody else the more different we look from everyone out there, the better. The more different we think from everyone out there, the better. The moment you start thinking like everyone out there, you have become them. The moment you find yourself agreeing with the homosexual rabbi, you have become it. The moment you think it's perfectly normal to allow your daughter to walk around with some bikini, you have become part of the problem. And you're only a stone throw away from committing the things that today you believe is disgusting. When society tells you it's not disgusting, don't think you won't say, maybe it's not. Learning Torah, doing mitzvot is no longer just to go to heaven. It's to survive.